Hi, Armand here with a quick one on the January 5th or 6th, depending upon where you are, solar eclipse in Capricorn. Just this little sort of, sort of short, sweet little thing, informal and, uh, you know, sort of casual talking about it. I said short and sweet, not, re not really short and sweet. Sweet's just the word you say after short, like, you know sweet and sour or sweet and savory or something like that. It's just words that go together. It's not that sweet an eclipse. It is um, It's a solar eclipse, which means the sun and the moon are together. It's a new moon, and uh, it's in the sign of Capricorn. New moon and Capricorn is a fine thing, of course. Um, but uh, this particular new moon is a solar eclipse. It's a south node solar eclipse. Now, among other things, and there's lots of meanings that go in with this, but when it comes to eclipses, we can think about north node eclipses and south node eclipses. And a south node eclipse tends to sort of bring out the more difficult part of a sign and uh, more difficult aspects of the eclipse. And in the sign of Capricorn, we're talking about some of the difficulties that we have with institutions, with our processes, with our governments, with our corporations, with business, with the structures and institutions of society. It's kind of heavy stuff, right? So um, that's, that's a little bit of a, it's a drain. The South Node is a bit of a drain that kind of takes away some of the energy and kind of points out some of the more challenging aspect of things. All right, that's one thing. The other thing is this eclipse is sam sandwiched, sandwiched right between uh, Saturn on the one side in Capricorn and Pluto on the other. Um, Saturn and Pluto tend, uh, well, you know, there's big transformation and uh, there's big changes that are afoot. And Saturn and Capricorn is, you know, sort of trying to clean up things. I think Pluto has gone through the sign kind of like a wrecking ball for our institutions and society. And Saturn is sort of trying to put things together, but I don't really think he's, uh, he's at the point of being able to do this successfully just yet. And I think that this solar eclipse is likely to show us that. So I think that that's a bit of a problem that comes with this eclipse. Now, um, the basics of this eclipse are that they really do play out largely on the collective level. And I know that that isn't so exciting for a lot of people. It's more like, you know, well, you know, what about me and my sign type of thing? And I'm, I'm, all, I'm all about that. You know, I'm all about that. The problem is what the collective, the society, you know, social issues, politics, economics, that, that's not something that is out there that you're watching that, you know, you see it on TV or get it through the media, social media, whatever, and sort of take it all in, and it's like, oh, gee, that's a shame. Like it's, you know, Game of Thrones or something like that. Well, increasingly, it is looking a lot like Game of Thrones. Uh, it is, it's actually, you know, it's the pond that you're swimming in. You know, we're all the fish in the pond, and the collective is the pond. And something goes wrong there, you know, uh, there, if, there's a, if there's a big, mean barracuda in the pond, that matters. If if the pond gets polluted, that matters. So, you know, this is not something that is happening elsewhere. It is something that is happening everywhere. You know, that includes you. You know, uh, if the recent uh, dip in the stock market seems like it's happening to other people, well, you know, that's your 401k. It's your investments, you know. So these types of things that happen on a global level, they affect you. Uh, they can affect you very directly. They affect you, if nothing else, in the sort of psychological pressure that you feel. It's true of politics. We have very polarized politics. You know, uh, it, it, affects, it affects the way you converse with people. It affects, perhaps, the areas that you're comfortable to go into. Uh, there's a lot of things that happen that they exert a sort of subtle pressure. And the pressure is likely to be not that subtle this weekend. And this forecast, really, I mean, if we're really talking about the eclipse, it's going to have long-range effects, but I would say that it's probably going to have the most effect. You're going to feel it most directly this weekend and going on until the, uh, going on until the uh, lunar eclipse that's happening in two weeks on the 21st. All right, so that's all that collective type of stuff. Now, this eclipse is relatively, it's, it's directly sextile to Neptune in Pisces. And that gives us two different takes on things. For one, if you happen to be a sort of power broker, manipulator type of person out there, you know, one of the big, uh, one of the big players in the collective, 
it definitely certainly does suggest the ability to sort of get away with some lies and stuff like that. It does seem to be able to, you know, maybe put a soft focus on things, get a message across kind of uh, cleverly. That might be especially true on Friday when Mercury is at the very, very end of Sagittarius. And so polarizing opinions and things that are based on belief, much more than on fact, can really take hold. So this is the time to sort of... Well, this is the time when people will, I'm not suggesting that you should do this, but this is the time when people can sort of rally the troops and say, you know, we gotta, we got to stick by our beliefs. That's a big thing that could happen at this time. Um, if we take it on a more personal level, a more creative level, the sort of thing that we might, you know, want to do in our personal lives, then we get a sort of a different take on that Sun-Neptune. Uh, first of all, Neptune helps us to see the very, very big picture. It helps us to recognize some of the spiritual truths or some of the spiritual things that are always informing us. Uh, you know, uh, no matter what the circumstances, there's always room for compassion. There's always room for compassionate action. There's always room for understanding. So, you know, we can open up the door if the pressure gets a little bit tense over the next couple of days. And if you've been watching for six and a half minutes, and I'm only giving you some useful advice right now, sorry. But if, if the pressure gets intense, you know, this could be a good time to meditate. This would be a good time to, you know, really get in touch with that stuff that doesn't go away because of shifting circumstances. When circumstances shift a lot, you have to find that sort of base that you can hold on to. I talked about this a bit in my January, in my 2019 forecast for all signs, which you can find on the channel, our channel, Integral Astrology channel, which you should like, uh, we should subscribe to, and then like this video. Anyway, I have to say that. Um, so the Sun-Neptune aspect suggests that this is a time when we can connect with spiritual stuff as a kind of escape <laughs> from the pressures. It also suggests creativity. This is a good time to be creative. I wouldn't say you're going to, you know, make that great product that is, you know, wonderful for others to see and applaud. It's, it's more a process of creativity. It's an incubation time. It's a new moon. And a new moon incubating with Neptune really suggests that, you know, <laughs> It, it, there's real potential there for something new. Um, if you think about this new moon incubation period, the, the question for you is, you know, is this a safe womb or is this kind of a toxic womb? You know, do you feel that you're in a safe place or do you feel that you're not? And with the south node in Capricorn, you may feel that you're not. And the North Node in Cancer, which is on the other side of the whole equation over here, the North Node in Cancer says, well, where would you feel safe? Where can you go? What would be something that is, you know, reassuring? Where is your safety zone? And how can you get there? Okay, a couple of little quick asides. Uh, at this eclipse, Venus is directly, within minutes, quincunx to Uranus. The need for security in our relationships and finances with Venus at the very end of Scorpio is strong. The need for independence, freedom, and experimentation with Uranus at the very end of Aries is very strong. Uh, Venus is also... That's a conflict. I'll let you figure that out for yourself. With... Um, Venus and Chiron in an easy trine, they're separating from an easy trine, um, we might be able to do a little bit of healing in the area of relationships. You should stop by the Relationships and Astrology channel on YouTube and catch uh, Margaret and I. We have a forecast about uh, this eclipse for relationships specifically. But uh, be aware that there is this kind of push-pull that we're feeling at this time between these different factors, particularly between that sort of need for security and the need for freedom. It's not, it's not a Libra-Aries dichotomy like we have quite frequently, which is this sort of, I gotta be me, or am I like, you know, or I gotta look out for you type of thing, or is it I have to look out for us. This is really, I need security and I need freedom. And those two things are kind of felt within and we don't want to project that onto others. Okay, 
last point is this is a Capricorn, Capricorn new moon solar eclipse. So we have to sort of treat it a little bit like we would any other Capricorn new moon, which is to say that it's a time for planting the seeds for things that we're going to do in our life out in the world, in career, in business, in our our reputation, in our participation in society, in our participation in the groups that we're in, um, but particularly career, I would say, is the thing for most of us. So this is a time to really kind of put a little bit of emphasis on that and think about, you know, where you want to go in 2019. You know, look at it just sort of as a sort of year ahead type of thing. It is a good time, let's put it this way, for your New Year's resolution in the area of career. Plant the seed, make it a, make it a good womb, a good incubation period, a good incubation area, and understand that things are going to get moving very fast. The first week of January had a little bit of a drag to it. As we get moving forward into next week, we're going to find that things start moving quicker. It's, it's hard to steer when things are moving fast, but that's another issue. And you can catch the January forecast on this same channel. And I uh, wish you the best for the eclipse. Don't sweat it. Everything seems out of proportion during eclipse time. Most of us are going to be just fine.